And welcome everybody to another special edition of Top Stock. Top Stock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly and it does seem like I'm saying welcome to another special edition quite often lately. Well, that's because last Friday we had the July 4th celebration and yesterday was our picnic in the park. Today is our Home Run for Hunger promotion which means fans, if you bring in five non-perishable food items to tonight's game, you will receive one free ticket. Bring in 10 non-perishable food items and you can receive four free tickets. That's right, a family of four can get into tonight's game for free. If you just bring in 10 non-perishable food items, it doesn't matter what those food items are. It could be five cans of corn, five cans of green beans, just five non-perishable food items for one free ticket. 10 will get you four free tickets. Well, to baseball now, the top sit at 17 and 16. Overall, they sit at two and three in the second half of the season. They have now lost two in a row to Moorhead City, the team that they will be playing tonight, and the Tops will look to exact some revenge on their eight to one loss from Monday night down in Moorhead City when the two teams uh, take off or face off against each other tonight at historic Fleming Stadium. Yesterday's game, though, was a noon start time against the High Point Thomasville Locos, one of the five teams out of High Point Thomasville. It was an exhibition game. It was our picnic in the park promotion. It was all sorts of fun before the game. There was a slip and slide on the third base side. There was a dunk tank. There was a mountain slide, which was also a water slide. Really cool. There were 1,300 and then some children who were all at Historic Fleming Stadium and fans. I have to tell you that these fans, yes, they, all those little people, they were making a lot of noise. So I really want to see what you can do tonight when the Tops need your help trying to get back to 500 in the second half of the season as they now sit at 2-3 and three against the second half leading Moorhead City Marlins who are 4-1 and one in the second half despite that woeful record overall. If they win the second half, they will get the automatic berth into the playoffs. So the Tops really do need to start getting on a little bit of a win streak here. They did win that exhibition game against the Locos yesterday by a score of 8-1, to one, with the real highlight being in the bottom of the seventh inning, John Valk, the pitcher, came to the plate to lead off the bottom of the seventh inning and whacked a double down the right field line. It looked like he probably should have stopped at first base, but he just kept running, and the throw from right field was offline, giving him a double, and he ended up scooting into third. And from the looks of things, John really has to work on his foot speed, a guy who is terrific out on the mound, but on the base pass, maybe not so hot. Christian Slaznik also Another pitcher came to the mound next and grounded a ball to the right side, driving home the run. And the Tobbs players were so happy, making so much noise in the third base dugout in that bottom of the seventh inning when head coach of the Tobbs, Justin Hay, sent five pitchers to the plate. One of them, Julio Valdez, actually got hit by a pitch and had a very comical reaction. He was more upset that he didn't get to swing the bat as he was hit with the first pitch than really the fact he was hit by the fastball from the left-handed pitcher for the High Point Thomasville Locos. Well, Justin Hay will be with me right after this break on Tob's Talk, presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back, everybody, to this edition of Top Talk, presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly, and joining me right now is head coach of the Tobs, Justin Hay. And Justin, yes, they... Kind of a cool game, the exhibition against the High Point Thomasville Locos. But the man that started out on the mound for the Tobs was Carson Jones. He hasn't really been pitching for a year. How do you like him out on the mound? Well, he's made a lot of improvements since he's got here. Carson came to us uh, making the transition from a catcher to a pitcher, uh, and you know he needed some innings. Uh, he's got a really good fastball. Um, but just needed some time on the mound to kind of get the feel of pitching down. Uh, and he started to do that. We've done, thrown a lot of bullpens. Uh, he's thrown a lot in our exhibition games. He's thrown some innings late in games uh, in the CPL. So he's coming along very nicely. Right now we're working on a confidence, uh, getting him to realize that you know, he does have good stuff and to trust it and just kind of let it fly. I think some of the times yesterday we saw that he didn't trust his stuff as much as he was afraid to get on the mound and just let it fly. And then after the first inning, he kind of relaxed and settled down into a groove. And when he did, uh, he was really good. What would you say is the hardest adjustment for a position player moving to the pitcher's mound? Oh, it's just the mental side of things. You, you don't understand the, the thought process that comes along with being a pitcher. And there's a lot of different things from being a starter and being a reliever. Uh, but with Carson, we're just working on throwing strikes, getting hitters out early in the count instead of wasting 
six, seven pitches trying to strike a guy out. You know, if he hits a, a fly ball uh, with with two pitches and gets out of the, the box, that's great. Uh, you know, I, I try to preach to our guys three pitches. Uh, we want a resolution in three pitches. Get out of the box, even if he gets a hit. You know, if you throw two pitches and give up a hit, and the next guy, you get him out, you can still come out on the shorter end of the pitch count uh, by doing that than you can going full counts and striking a guy out. And actually, talking about the pitchers, we saw some of the pitchers do something we will probably not see the rest of the summer, which is bat. You put John Valak in there to begin the bottom of the seventh inning in the seven inning game, and he stroked a double down the first baseline. How much fun is that for you in an exhibition game? Oh, it was great. I mean, we had provided ourselves a little bit of a cushion so we could get some pitchers in there. And uh, we started out with the returning guys, who had guys who had been here last year and came back. And that means a lot to us when guys come back to our organization. So we let John lead off. He'd been there all day sitting beside me telling me if I just let him hit, he'd hit a double. He told me he was going to pull it down the line and hit a double. So it was actually even funnier in the dugout because he'd been saying it all day that he was going to do it. Um, you know, and then got to third because I don't know if you noticed this, but he wasn't stopping at first. He was going to second, whether he got thrown out or not. And uh, he, he drew the throw, the guy that made a throwing error, and he got to third. And then Christian Slaznik came up and uh, showed our hitters that it's not always that hard to get a runner in from third base with no outs. So I just hit a ground ball up the middle and get the RBI. So, you know, then we had some other guys go to the plate, some other pitchers that I think it was just a really big fun thing for them to do. Uh, they all seemed to enjoy it, and you know, it was a day yesterday that we could had a lot of kids in the stands. But they were enjoying the the atmosphere, so we wanted our guys to have a little fun too, and uh, I think we did. So, have you ever heard of a pitcher wearing swim swim trunks around the second inning and then coming into the game and slapping a double? Yeah, don't know that I have. Uh, yeah, uh, John came to me and said, "Do I need to get dressed?" And I said, "Oh, you know, there's a possibility." Uh, but, you know, he helped out with the kids yesterday before the game. He was in the dunk tank and going down the slide because he, he wasn't supposed to do anything yesterday, but he got stretched out, and uh, sometimes you just got to give guys a chance to do something fun. And now back to the more serious side of things. Julio Valdez will be starting tonight's game against the Moorhead City Marlins. Last couple of starts for Julio haven't really gone the way he wanted, but Monday he pitched against the Moorhead City Marlins in Moorhead City, and he pitched pretty well. What were some of the adjustments that he made? Um, well, first of all, I think he's back to being healthy. I think uh, his three starts ago in Fayetteville, he tweaked his back a little bit, tried to pitch through it, and that kind of was hindering his performance a little bit. But now he's back healthy, he's had extended rest. So we got him back in the game Monday just for a little confidence booster. We've worked on staying uh, a little more quiet on the front side. He was getting to where he was trying to overthrow uh, and that was causing him to be kind of erratic around the strike zone. So we're I've challenged him to pitch in the strike zone, kind of take some examples from some of our other guys, such as Daniel Batts, who just pitches. He doesn't try to do anything that he's not, doesn't try to overthrow, just throws three pitches in the strike zone. And Julio did a good job, so uh, he's going to get the start tonight and hopefully build off of that. Um, and uh, we're, we're really excited about Julio getting back because he is a returner. So, you know, it's not like he's somebody who doesn't know this league and can't uh, perform well in this league. Uh, I think the back issue was really bothering more than he wanted to tell me. Yeah. So last question here. Are you starting to get sick of Moorhead City? It seems like you play them every other day. Um, I don't know that six the right word. I, I do think that it would be nice to see some other faces in the league. Uh, you know, we've got other teams. Um, but, um, you know, that's the schedule. We'll play them. But, uh, yeah, and especially because they're hot right now. So it's, that makes it even worse. But uh, we're, uh, they got beat last night. And uh, we owe them because they've beat us two times in a row now. So we definitely owe them tonight. And we're looking forward to getting in front of our fans and, and hopefully paying them back for the last two games. All right, well, Justin, tonight's game, 7.05 start with gates opening at 6 o'clock. It's our Home Run for Hunger promotion. Bring in five non-perishable food items, get one free ticket. Bring in 10, get four free tickets. Justin, thank you for coming in this morning. When we come back on this edition of Top Sock, we will have Sandy Lackner from the Wilson Community College right here on Top Sock, presented by Thomas and Ferris. And welcome back, everybody, to this very special edition of Tobstock. Tobstock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly, and tonight's game for the Tobs is our home run for hunger. If you bring in five non-perishable food items, you will receive one free ticket, ten non-perishable food items, and you can get four free tickets. And joining me right now on Tobstock is Sandy Lackner from Wilson Community College. And Sandy, first off, what is it that you do with the college? 
I'm the Director of Admissions and Student Activities with Wilson Community College, which means I have the opportunity to work with students all the way from recruitment through admissions, career development, and graduation. And I really appreciate you taking the time coming in here this morning because it's pretty busy right now at the college. What's the buzz like on campus? Oh, it's wonderful. We have students enrolled in classes and labs. We are moving in uh, early registration right now. So we'll have early registration through July 17th and we'll continue with admissions, financial aid processing, and regular registration August 13th and 14th. And then classes will begin for the fall on August 18th. It's very exciting. And speaking of exciting, we do have the promotion tonight, the home run for hunger. And last year, the college helped out with the Stuff the Bus promotion. Why is it that the college likes to help out with these promotions in the community? Well, we are very much community-based. We have about 10 or 11,000 students every year come through Wilson Community College. A number of those benefit from our partnerships with the community, whether it is with the TOBs, um, with our other local organizations, with Wilson County Schools. We're, we're um, also going to be part of this year's back to school backpack drive. So with hunger, with needs for our students and our families in the community, we feel it's very important. It's our responsibility. And now we're talking about community, but I feel like when people listen to me talk and now they hear you talk, they can kind of tell we might not hail from this community. Where do you come from and why do you end up down here in Wilson? I am from Buffalo Niagara Falls, New York. And um, it's kind of a long story, but I guess the short answer would be when I finished graduate school, I um, finished with a degree in education. and. I thought I was going to go to an international school and instead my God said I want you down there and I came down here to Wilson, um, the Wilson area and started in the K-12 system at Nash Rocky Mount Schools and found myself over here at Wilson which has been just a wonderful experience the whole time moving here and staying in North Carolina. And you mentioned staying in North Carolina. From what you were telling me beforehand, when you initially got down here, you were thinking maybe 365 days and out, right? I what was. What happened? I was. Uh, it was a bit of culture shock moving down here, which it would be for any place. That's not a bad thing. It's just a different thing, which is one of the reasons that I moved down here. And at first, I was very taken aback. That's the truth. Um, but I've been here eight years now, and it has been wonderful. It's changed my life and my family's life. It is just a wonderful area with great loving community members and I wouldn't change the experience for anything. All right, well Sandy, thank you and thanks to the college for helping out the Tobs tonight with our home run for hunger. And remember folks, the game tonight, 7.05 start gates open at six o'clock. Bring in five non-perishable food items, get one free ticket. Bring in 10, get four free tickets. We'll be back with Henry Skinner just after this. Welcome back folks to Tom's Talk presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly and joining me right now is Henry Skinner. Henry represents both the Lions Club as well as First Baptist Church and you've been a part of both of those organizations for quite some time but let's start with the First Baptist Church. What is it that you do with the First Baptist Church? I believe you're a deacon, correct? I am. I'm chairman of deacons there this year. Uh, I teach Sunday school and have been involved there with my family for 20 plus years. So. First Baptist is, uh, has been around since 1860 and uh, has cared about Wilson and its, and its uh, citizens for, for years, still do and always will. And we were talking right before we started rolling here about what it is that First Baptist likes to do. It's, you like to feed people, but it's not just physically speaking, correct? No, uh, people need to be fed both spiritually and physically. And to meet their spiritual need, you have to give them uh, what they need just as, as uh, we've been taught, it's, it's nice to give a person a fish, but it's better to teach them how to fish. If we can help find ways to combat hunger uh, while we're feeding people, uh, we like to do that. We like to represent Christ in a way that uh, others would see that there's a reason for living in the way that he taught. So that's why we're involved. And there's another program that you work with in Wilson, the Hope Station. Now, what does that do? Hope Station has been around since 1987. It began an old fire station down on Douglas Street that was the main fire station here. When it uh, vacated, we occupied it as a shelter for homeless men. And we, in, uh, about 10 years ago, were able to move into a new facility down on the corner of Goldsboro and Lee Streets, uh, where we house, again, about 20 men each night who are trying to find their way in life. 
we help them by way of feeding, giving them a place to stay, uh, and at the same time helping them with their education toward getting a GED uh, or moving toward finding jobs and becoming self sufficient here in, in our community, which combats hunger in another way. We also have a food service that we uh, uh, partner with the North Carolina Food Bank and with volunteers and contributors here. Uh, three days a week we have people that we've screened that they are eligible, they do have a legitimate need for, for help with, with food, uh, and we give them three days worth of food in a nutritious package. Uh, for them and their family and, and the amount we give depends upon the size of the family but we do that with volunteers uh, Monday, Wednesday and Friday of each week. Uh, we also partner uh, with Hope Station, the North Carolina Food Bank and First Baptist to uh, have a food giveaway every other month whereby any excess food that's available from the food bank uh, is brought into First Baptist early in the morning we have volunteers that pack it into boxes and we give away families, about 200 families get food uh, through that medium each, each every other month. So. so you do a great job with First Baptist, you do another great job and a great service with Hope Station, but you're also a part of the Lions Club as right. well and their motto is a fairly apt one for tonight's Home Run for Hunger promotion. Our motto is we serve. That's what we do as Lions. So we began in 1917 and and began as a group of businessmen who wanted to do something beyond what they were about in their businesses to help the communities that were providing them with a livelihood. Uh, in 1923, Helen Keller challenged us to become Knights for the Blind. So we care for those with visual impairments. Here in Wilson, we have a special relationship with the uh, Eastern North Carolina School for the Deaf and help those who have hearing impairment. And many of the individuals that we serve in the Wilson community have hunger problems as well. They need food and they need subsistence and, and assistance. Lions are here to serve and we do that and this is another way that we can help in sponsoring this because if we can get the community involved in doing what we need to do to help meet basic needs now while we're helping prepare these people to, to care for themselves, then, then we're doing what we are intended to do. All right, and folks, if you want to help out tonight for our Home Run for Hunger campaign, remember, bring in non-perishable food items, five for one free ticket, ten for four free tickets. Henry, thank you so much for joining here this morning on Top Stock. Really do appreciate and appreciate all the work that you do within the Wilson community. Thank you. We appreciate the times and everything that's going on tonight. Yeah. So remember, folks, five non-perishable food items, one free ticket, ten non-perishable food, uh, non-perishable food items, four free tickets, all that and more at tonight's game, which starts at 7.05 with gates opening at 6 o'clock. When we come back, we'll wrap up this edition of Top Stock presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back, folks, to this edition of Top Stock. Remember, tonight's game is our Home Run for Hunger promotion. We have a bunch of different sponsors, and I'd like to thank two of the sponsors that came in today. First, Henry Skinner from both First Baptist Church, as well as the Lions Club, and Sandy Lackner from Wilson Community College. Other sponsors for tonight's game, the Lee Motor Group, as well as Vic Family Farms. Now, the reason all these groups are sponsoring the promotion tonight is because this is a chance for all you folks in Wilson who like to attend the Tobbs games to give back to the community. If you bring in five non-perishable food items, you will receive one free ticket to tonight's game. If you bring in 10 non-perishable food items to tonight's game, you will get four free tickets. It's a great cause. It helps out the community, and it feeds the hungry. It feeds the homeless. So please, do what you can to help tonight and to help the Wilson community. Thank you again to the sponsors for tonight's game for our Home Run for Hunger promotion. Those sponsors, again, Vic Family Farms, Wilson Community College, as well as for First Baptist Church and the Lions Club as well as the Lee Motor Group. So thank you to all of those sponsors for sponsoring tonight's Home Run for Hunger campaign. Remember, the game starts at 7.05, gates open at 6 o'clock, and folks, it's our Home Run for Hunger promotion, and apologies to Effie Trinket, but may the Tobs be ever in your favor. We'll see you tonight, folks, at Historic Fleming Stadium. <laughs>